Prez, man, check us out right now. You're tuning to live right now, the Prez Show Live. You know what I'm saying? I got a pleasure to sit down with my man right now to my right, Norman Dean. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, sir? Yes, sir, man. What up with you? It's good to see you again, man. It's been a minute. Yeah, man. It's been a minute. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be back in here repping uh, myself as well as Team Epic. Yeah, man. Shout out to Team Epic, man. Definitely, uh, real quick, man, shout out to Studio 41 for letting us come in. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful studio right here, downtown Pittsburgh, man, 105th Avenue. Let's say it real quick. Real quick plug. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to Promo Push, UFTV. We in there. Um, but definitely want to talk about was, uh, you know, what you got going on. You know, we can get to that. But, man, the biggest thing I want to get to, man, is like 2007. <laughs> you know what I mean? 2007. This is pre-Norman Dean rapping days. Yeah. What were you like back then, man? <sighs> 2007, um, but yeah, that was 2007. That was about a year or two before I even ever thought about uh, rapping or doing any type of music. Um, at that time, I was, I think, I was probably in like eighth grade, seventh grade, maybe. Yeah. At that time, I was like, I was real into sports still, so I wanted to be like a pro football player. You know, what I mean, I wanted to be like a linebacker, but I'm, I'm only like five seven, so that 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 dream <laughs> died real quick. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, but yeah, you know what I mean. I was I was just really into like sports and stuff back then and then uh and then one day um i was just i was just bored i'm, I'm in school and i'm bored it was like social studies class or something yeah so i'm bored and i'm like all right i'm, I'm gonna try to write a rap you know what i mean right. so uh, so i write the rap you know what i mean i spend the class writing the rap and then some homies some homies there was in a the class with me they come up to me they're like what you doing and i was like uh oh, i'm just trying to write a rap you know what i mean <laughs> and they're like oh well you should just like you rap it for us and i was like all right you know what I mean? So I, I rapped it for him, and they're like, yeah, that, that's pretty good. You know what I mean? And I yeah. was like, word. You know what I mean? So the next day came, and I'm like, I'm in there. I'm writing I'm writing another rap. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. like, all right, I, I'm just keep doing this. You know what I mean? They, they came up, um, same thing. You know what I mean? Oh, that's hard. You should keep doing it. You know what I mean? A couple times. So after I did a couple, I eventually started recording them on my phone. On my little, I had some little crap phone at the time. It didn't sound good. So I, I, would, I, I had my computer. I played a beat off YouTube. I had my phone to record, and I would rap. But people would want them. They'd be like, send them to me. You know what right. I mean? So I, I was doing that for a little, for like, not not too long, like like a month or something like that. You know what I mean? And then um, I posted to Facebook one day. I was like, new song dropping. No, not Facebook. MySpace. MySpace. This was MySpace. Okay. <laughs> so the one day I posted to MySpace, I was like, new song dropping tonight. And then um, my homie, my, my current manager now, Mike Neal, yeah. he, um, this was before we was even like boys, he hit Mike me up. Mike Neal was a rapper. He was. He was a rapper <laughs> at the time. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's the crazy thing. So he hit me up and he's like, he's like, oh, bro, I didn't know you'd be rapping. And I was like, yeah, man, I just started, you know what I mean? And he was like, well, would you be interested in coming to an actual studio? And I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. So, um, so we booked a session like a week later. We go in there. We did a Roger That remix. Yeah. That was my first ever recorded uh, thing was a remix to Roger That. And then, um, yeah, I mean, like I went in there, I laid my verse and I came out and I was like, this is this is fun. You know what I mean? So like I, I, I from there, like I had linked up with some people and I just kind of c- continued to do that. And it just over the years, it just grew into such it just grew into a passion. I mean, it grew into something that I never ever thought it would be from the time I was right. in class writing raps to pass the time to now as where this is my career, you know what I mean? This right. is this is my dream, this is my everything. So yeah. it's 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 crazy that it came from nothing and it could've it could've if I was if I would have just paid attention in class, I maybe wouldn't even be here, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, like, social studies teacher or something. You know like what I mean? Huh? It's it, it it's just a split chance thing, but but I, that's why I feel like it is destiny because it came from something just just that i really didn't care about like like i said writing raps out of boredom and now it's become something that i can make money off of right. and, and and do things like that you know what i mean so so let's let, let's let's stick right there man like you went you know started writing rhymes and started actually recording was that a, did you go to uh hit no mcm no what, i, I what? went to my my buddy sal it was, okay. it was called Lyricist Records Studios. It was uh, out by my way. Okay. But the second the second studio that I had been to after that was Hit. Okay. From yeah. MCM Studios and everything. Yeah. And I recorded with him for about um for about a year. I put out uh he recorded um most of uh 
my Awesome Takes Practice okay, mixtape, yeah. which was my first all original project. And then after that, I started recording uh, with my homie Seiko at his spot, which was Upstreet Studios. Okay, yeah. And then that led up to me opening my own studio and like him kind of like working with me at my studio, you know what I mean? Team Epic Studios. And right. now I got my own spot and I'm, I'm working every day doing my yeah. thing, you know what I mean? It was just all about investing so I could get it to the point where I'm not going and having to uh, spend money on studio time and, and this and that and find a way there. I just got it all together myself and learned yeah. it and everything. So got to got to got to be more than a rapper, you know what I mean? Got to be more you than gotta, a rapper. Got to be more than just a rapper. A lot of people don't uh a lot of people don't understand that, you know what I mean? It's you got to be a rapper, you got to be the visionary, you got to be a businessman, you know, it's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Right, rap the rap is just the is just that one part of it. You that's know just the mean? one part. That's just what the people see. Yeah. That's just that's just what the people that's They don't know the time you put into it. The behind time you're the in scenes. the studio, building the studio, mm -hmm. the beat, getting mm -hmm. the beat, listen to the beat, then writing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's a process, you know what I mean? Some sometimes sometimes it takes like sometimes it takes 2 hours, sometimes it takes 3 hours, sometimes it takes a half an hour, you know what yeah. I mean? It just it just depends on how the how the mood is and how everything is flowing. You know what I mean? Sometimes it goes quicker than than some other times, but but the time the time spent never matters because it's always for a quality project. You know right. what I mean? Right. So how long have you ever have you had to take to write a one uh, one song? <clears throat> the longest? Yeah, the longest. Uh, uh typically, I say typically. I mean, when I when I really get in my zone and I, I write a full song, probably like. I don't know. It's it's really hard to say because when I'm in that studio by myself, yeah. just zoning, like time just flies sometimes. But I, I would say like a, a full a full song that's like I'm like this is one of those like yeah. probably like an hour, okay. at, le at least an hour. I don't like to rush it, but sometimes it's quicker. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes it's it's it might be two hours if I take a break or something because sometimes I need that mental break. You know what I mean? Right. Sometimes I might write a verse and then a hook and then come back the next day for the second verse with a fresh mind you know what i mean sometimes it, it just depends on what my mindset is and the surrounding environment and everything yeah definitely it definitely. all plays a part the feng shui of things the, the feng shui of everything i've been using yeah. that word a lot lately I've been I, using I, that. I think i might start using that <laughs> i've used that word a lot lately <laughs> we might have to bring it back for sure um <laughs> but yeah man like what does your, your your people say like your family like your, your mom's and your pops like what do they think because i mean let's be honest like you come to your mom and dad like, hey, I'm gonna be a rapper now. Well, and I'm gonna make this my career. Well, you see, like when when I when I was back when I was like 16, 17, when I was writing them raps, recording them yeah. on my phone, I used to hide them. I used to hide them from my mom because I was like, I, I didn't know what I didn't know what her reaction was gonna be. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm gonna hide them. But um, no, nah, but my mom is like one of my biggest fans. She's one of my biggest supporters. I mean, like she she hears all my music. You know what I mean? She comes to all my shows. Um. And, you know, I mean, like, you know, like, there's some stuff in, in, in songs that moms don't want to hear you, yeah. you say, you know what I mean? But she still supports me to the fullest regardless because she understands that that's just a part of the art and everything, you know what I mean? So I definitely get uh, good support uh, from my parents. I mean, my, my, my pops is, is proud of me, too, you know what I mean? But my mom, is, she's there for everything. She's, yeah. she's, she's one a of, fan. She's a fan, for sure. That's she, you know what I mean? It's 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 nice to, to have the support of your parents rather than feeling like, oh, I'm doing this, but they don't want me to do this like no nah, she she's she's full uh she's in full support behind it because you know what i mean I, I run the studio too right which is another aspect to to my my uh just everything you know what i mean because that that's that's my business you know what i mean yeah. along with me being an artist and doing what i do i also run a studio so i'm also an engineer i record mix do everything for all these other people you know what i mean so she, she's very supportive because she sees the progress and it's it's not it's not slowing up. You yeah, know after I mean? you get your parents on the side, man, it's kind of like you can you can take over the world. You yeah, know what I mean? but yeah, coming you from feel the like background, you at like Carnegie. Carnegie is like a blue collar. That's a blue collar town. For it's real. it's it's chill. It's chill. I mean, like it's not. It's not the hood. It's not the hood. Yeah. But but it's not like. It's not where rich people live or anything yeah. like that. Working it's, class family. It's it's working yeah. class, you know what I mean? And just, just like any any other place, like, you know, stuff happens, like people get shot there sometimes. Yeah. But that's you know what I mean, that's yeah. not just cause of like based on the area solely, but no, it's it's a nice chill, calm area. I like I like where I live because not too much stuff goes on. Right. And um that's where I've been for most of my life. I mean I I moved I moved around a lot during my childhood. But I was that's where I was born. So throughout the process of me moving to all these places throughout PA, like I, we would always be there at times. You know what I mean? No yeah. matter if we lived in like South Park or 
Brownsville or or Sheridan or whatever, like we would always like be in Carnegie at that time. So like that's always where I wanted to be as right. a kid, you know. Right, right. When you did the your first mixtape, you did Beat Reaper, right? Beat Reaper. So when you did the first mixtape, were you thinking like, man, I'm about to, you know, about to become this team epic, uh, hippie high well, dude? Like, did you think that was no? Nah, because that was that was like at least a year before Team Epic, before I had even thought of that. Um, when I was working on the first on Beat Reaper, which was just like a, it was like 15 tracks, it was like all industry beats. My main aim with with that project was to show people like I got bars, like I got punchlines, I got bars, I can spit some hard bars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Over whoever else's beat, like I can kill a beat harder than the original artist, whatever. Yeah, you know I mean, I just wanted to prove to people that I could rap and I got bars. Right. So that 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 was the point of bars. of that. Yeah, bars. <laughs> that was the point of that first project. So then after that, I was able to to you know move on to making like all original music and then and switching the style up a little bit. You know what I mean? And and being versatile. But that was just kind of like an intro to Norma Dean. Okay. All to right. me. All right. Then the second project. Awesome takes practice. Awesome takes practice. Awesome takes practice. That I like was, that title, by the way. It I like yeah. That title. It was. Yeah, it, right. There was a lot of inspiration behind that project. Um, that yeah. That was my first all original project. Still one of my favorite projects today i go back and i listen to all my old projects and i'm like these are these are really good still like you know what i mean yeah that's mike's favorite joint he told me other yeah day. you know what <laughs> i mean um but yeah that was um that was really based off just like what the what the title says awesome takes practice you know what i mean like if you want to be awesome at whatever you're doing but right. you got to practice so like that that's that my second project off beat reaper so that's me still practicing that's me still getting to where gotcha. to where i want to get so that's like the first like the transition from like my start so like when I'm starting to progress, you know what I mean? I'm starting to find my own sound and, and find my own with, with the original beats and everything. Yeah. And um so that was just like a step up and me kinda trying to find out what direction that I wanted to head to next. And then Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Piss, a- Pittsburgh, which is actually not available online anymore. Really? It's not it's not available online. I think online. I got it on my computer. You still. see, that's <laughs> whoever has it has it. It's 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 one of those things. But Pittsburgh, that was um originally that was gonna be a a full mixtape. Yeah. And um, I wasn't really sure what sound I was going for on that one, and it it it, it was turning out real like, kind of like trap rappy, gotcha. trap rappish, yeah. and and I, I wasn't sure if I if I really liked that direction, so instead of doing a full project, I put it out as an EP because I was I was working on it for a while and I was promoting it and 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 it was supposed to come out, so I wasn't just gonna dead just not drop it. Yeah. But I, I I decided that that's that wasn't the direction like that wasn't the sound that I really wanted to go yeah, for. Yeah, you had stunner to fly on that. Yeah, too, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, we had jams. Yeah, jams. We on. had jams. We, had jams we, we had jams, and they were good jams. I mean, all the jams that were on it were they were good, but like I said, that just wasn't that wasn't the sound that my heart was in. You know what I mean? Like when I was making those jams, I didn't I didn't feel like my heart was in it. So I had to just I was like, all right, whatever we have, whatever tracks we have for this. They're gonna go on it. I'm gonna put it out as an EP, and I'm gonna. I have to get back to working on something that I really love. Like right, you know what right. I mean. And that's and that's where Hippie High came in. So Hippie High and Hippie High. So, that was that was like um, that was like you was in you was in your zone, the Hippie High. Yeah, yeah. You was definitely in your zone. Like that's when I I talked to Mike. You know your manager. I was like, Yo, Mike. It seems like he progressed into. Hippie high, you know what I mean? It was like, you know how you hear some rapper, they just dropping mixtapes. Mm-hmm. There's no real progression. It's like, I'm just doing this because of this. I'm doing this because I feel like this. Like, you was like progressing the two mm-hmm. hippie high. Mm-hmm. So you get there, because we, we had an interview before talking about hippie high. But when you got there, it was kind of like, I just kind of like sat back and looked. It was like, I think this is where you wanted to be at. You know what I mean? Not self-consciously. I think that's what you were driving to. Mm-hmm. You, know, you feel like that or... um. Well, Hippie High, Hippie High was was another like project that had like some inspiration behind it. It was, like I said, this is kind of like another transition from what Awesome Takes Practice was because, like I said, Pittsburgh wasn't really what I was trying to do. But Hippie High, that was um, that was like at at, at that time was that was a time in my life where I was really like transitioning my entire life, like my entire mindset from just like whatever it was like basically I, I was i was trans trying to transition my life and my mindset into like an optimistic positive type of type of wave you know what i mean and and, and that was 
all made like during the midst of that transition and um it just it just really reflects like a lot of how like my life was at the yeah. time and um it's definitely a sound that I really enjoyed and really enjoyed um working with but that's that's not uh that's not the official sound you're, you're like every, my 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 aim my goal is that no project sounds like a previous one I did Okay. Any project you ever hear come out for me, you won't be able to say, oh, this sounds like that. You know what I mean? This track sounds like that one track you did, never. Because my my goal is to have every project be be like, it's it's a brand new package, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like my my first, just like um, Beat Reaper was like the, the Nintendo 64. Yeah. ATP was like the PS One, like uh, you know what I mean, and just so on and so forth. Yeah. And like Hippie High was like Xbox Hippie High, yeah. Hippie High was like the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty of my yeah. projects. And now like I'm 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 working on like two projects for this year, and that's gonna be like those are gonna be like all right, like when 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 those come out and you hear those, you're gonna be like this is mainstream caliber, like you know what I mean. These yeah. these guys are holding their own with with the you know what I mean whoever you want to say in the industry I don't want to drop no names for, for people get all sensitive but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean that that's that's just how I feel and that's that's the, definitely like the level that we're on now and that's why I didn't put out any projects in 2014 is because I was still still like working and still like progressing like I I mean like I feel really comfortable with where I am yeah as an artist and and I did during 2014 too but it wasn't to where I wanted to put out a project so i just dropped a lot of music yeah. some videos did some shows and now i feel like this year is is that it's just that time you know 2014 now that it was an influx of a lot of media now mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people i'm not gonna say like it was because of me or anything like that but i feel like it was but <laughs> it was an influx of a lot of people doing blogs a lot of people doing interviews that yeah. wasn't doing interviews before. A lot of people covering shows. Mm -hmm. A lot of people throwing shows. So with that being said, like a lot of people start doing these lists. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, I, I try to steer clear from the list unless it makes complete sense. sense yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because depending on your list, the person that you are, mm -hmm. where you're from, you may hear a different song. You may hear something, a different sound somewhere else. And you may think, oh, they're hot. Hotter than you know the next person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know it's very clicky. Yeah. You know what I mean? It gets like that. Yeah, that's, that's it's how very it is. Clicky, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, speaking about that, like, do you ever look at these lists that come out, like the top ten lists that people do, or the who's hot now, or who's to look for, and and stuff like that? You ever looked at that list before? And then, I mean, I I see them. Yeah. You know, but I don't I don't I don't really pay much attention because I mean at the end of the day I mean that's that's just one person's opinion. So you know what I mean you could have you could have gave the next man that job and he might have had a whole another list. Right. You know I mean that's just one person's opinion. So like, I'm never gonna let one one person's opinion affect me. You know what I mean it's about the bigger picture. It's about the overall right. scene of everything. You know what I mean and and to me I'm I'm more worried about the fans and connecting with them more than what any blog is saying about me or or anything like that. You know what I mean it's it's, it's more about your your audience and the people that you're connected with and the people that are really feeling your music and who you're making the music for, you know what I mean? Right, right. Speaking of that, you, you went out to A3C. Speaking of audience. Yeah. That's a pretty dope audience to nice. go for any artist. You know Man, what I mean? we spent we spent like four days in Atlanta. Well first first of all it was nice because we're coming from from some cold. We're coming from cold <laughs> Pittsburgh. And we went down there on an R V. It was an eleven hour drive. I, I, let me let me let me help you understand how packed this R V was real quick. It was me Palermo Stone, DJ Spills, uh, their guy John, Beatty, Vinny Radio, Franchise, uh, DJ Bamboo, Aunt Rome, Kid Keem, two females, <laughs> and that might have been all of us. That no, I think there might have been one or two other people, but basically we're in like a there's two beds in this RV. I was and about like to say, how big seats. is this? Bro, we, we, were, we were crammed, but we, we were crammed in this. It was 11 hours there, 11 hours back. But I, I will say it was it was a great bonding experience. Like, that was one of those things where it's just like you have all those people and it's all these people that have the same vision and they're all from the same scene and we all just got to, like, genuinely bond. Like, 
in 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 a music sense and like outside of a music sense because like we're spending the whole weekend together like it's not just like we weren't just there to to, to go to our show and perform you know yeah. what i mean like we we spent the whole weekend like going around atlanta like sightseeing hopping in and out of lifts and shit like watching people perform like i got to see mystical perform i got to see kevin gates i got to see ninth wonder like yeah. give a speech like i got to see a lot of people so it was just a great it was a great uh cultural experience it was just a great hip-hop thing in general and it was great to be down there with those people and it, it definitely had me coming back to the berg real inspired yeah. real inspired it was one of those one of those life moments that you definitely don't forget so you came back when you came back you were like you know doing your thing you start dropping some more music yeah first thing i came first thing you i did when like i came back five joints, yeah like. first thing i did when i came back i, I hopped in the booth and, and recorded started recording like because yeah. i had that motivation you know what i mean so when i mean i'm always you know i always have my my motivation you know what i mean my, my my key motivations and everything that pushes me to do what i do but that was one of them things where it gives you the extra boost it's like oh i can't wait to get back and work i can't yeah. wait so I, you know, what I mean, I got back and I, I, I used that. I utilized that extra motivation. I knocked some things out. I still have a, a lot of things that I recorded in that time that still haven't come out. Mm. Um, I got, I got a lot of hot stuff that hasn't come out yet, and that, that's not on my account. It's just like things that I've done for other people and everything, like right. fe features and such. You know what I mean? But um, I, I hope that they all come out eventually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I seen that you did a, you did a feature, but uh, it's very interesting, like how genres in Pittsburgh are. Yeah. Cause there's only two genres. Yeah. It's either either you boom boom back, pretty hip hop, much. you know or, what I mean, or it's trap. It's trap. Yeah. There's no middle genre. Yeah. Really. Because you know you can do a track with like a hubs, mm. and it makes sense. You know what I mean? But when you it's like when you do a track with like you said, stunning to fly, that's another another mm. era, another another slot. It's like I like to hear this, hear how it sounds. When I heard you on the Mies joint, when you and Mies did the track together, I was interested to hear. Mm -hmm how it sounded it was i was like i'm interested to see yeah how they who who can who takes who we, takes the we came together this. nice yeah we, we it was a nice match and that and see like pe people say that there's like a, a, a disconnect between hip-hop and, and trap in the scene not for me personally not for me because like i, I rock with everybody like I've, I've been on both sides like you know what i mean i don't i don't have no problem like going and working with like a hubs or BD, and then turn around and going and hitting the stew with Mies or or Stunner, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's gonna sound good every time, and and I consider myself a versatile artist, you know what I mean? So I can I can go there and I can I can work with the trap rappers and we can get on a trap soundy song, but yeah. my verse isn't it's not about me killing nobody trap. It's it's about my life, but it matches the sound and it matches the flow, you know what I mean? It's just about being versatile and being able to mesh sounds and, and create together and, and get that good compromise so you got that good end product, you know what I mean? Right. Were you worried about like your fans or people saying, Oh, he's trying to go trap. You know what I mean? He just did a track with me. He's like, what's he doing? Like he gonna nah. go P O P now, like what's going on? Nah, because because like my fans my fans know me. Like my fans know that my main Steez is with hip hop, but they also know that like you know what I mean like I'm I'm an outside of the box type of artist so like yeah. I like I like to do stuff like that because because then it's like when me and Mies get together and we put a jam out it's like all my hip hop fans that have never heard Mies they're like oh this guy's tight let me go listen to his music and all his uh, trap rap fans that have never heard me they're like oh this guy's tight let me right. you know what i mean and that and that might introduce a hip-hop fan to some trap rap they like or a trap rap fan to some hip-hop they like you know what i mean so it's all yeah. about kind of like appealing to each other's fan base and kind of like gaining fans off of that you know what i mean it's not enough for that in pittsburgh no honestly it's, it's, it's not enough for it's that. not enough because it's because everybody everybody just wants everybody wants themselves and their click to win and yeah. and, and i mean i feel it I feel it, you know what I mean? I feel that everybody wants to win. You want you and your peoples to win. But there is a bigger picture. Definitely. There's there's definitely a bigger picture. And it definitely, it, it requires collaboration to a certain point, whether it's on, like, songs through music or, like, shows. just business-wise yeah. shows, you know what I mean? Like, it, it needs, people need to come together and, and just, you know, just make things happen. Like, you can't do it on your own. Definitely you know what I mean? People, nobody blows up on their own. Nobody makes it out of here on their own. Exactly. Well, real quick, man, we're going to take a little break right now. All right? All right, it's the Prayer Show Live edition podcast right now with my man, the homie, Norman Dean, yes, Team sir. Epic. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about Team Epic, a little bit more about the moves he's about to make in the coming future. All right? So y'all stay tuned.